congratulations for coming this far. And I bring you warm greetings from the Hill of Knowledge, University of Ghana. This is a revision video shooting for nursing 234, which is the surgical conditions of the integumentary, gastrointestinal, and the endocrine system. And by the grace of God, we have been able to go through the semester. Before I go any further, I would like to comment on your mid-semester exams that you had online. A few of your comments on Sakai has been taken note of, and that is the time, 45 minutes for 30 questions. So next semester, perhaps we'll take it to one hour, uh, looking at the internet connectivity issues. And also want to indicate that you have to read the instructions carefully. I said that when you move from one person to the other, you cannot come back. Because then somebody will cheat, will say that, let me go and read and come back and answer. So it's going to continue like that. If you are not ready, a whole week, take your time, be ready, and know that you are writing an exam. So it's not as if you have a lot of textbooks and your notes around you, so you kind of quickly glance through your notes and then that is not uh, a sincere exam process. An exam is an exam. Then, this semester, you're going to have 75 objective questions and five short answer questions. Again, 75 objectives and five short answer questions. Now, the questions are such that if you rely only on the slides that you have, you will not pass because the questions are broad, they are skill-based, they are knowledge-based, attitude-based, everything. Now, one key characteristic about a university graduate person must be able to seek knowledge. So the fact that you are a distant student doesn't mean that that um, quality of a university student and remember, you are doing the program at the only university in Ghana, the University of Ghana. So you should be able to look for knowledge, get the knowledge, the skill that is needed. So that that certificate that you hold in future as a graduate of the University of Ghana will carry the weight that it deserves. So I'm, I'm not saying that the person is not saying that at all. But I'm saying that if you rely only on the slides, you will not be able to make it. And the five short answer questions, I mean short answer. So you go straight to the point. Just answer what I've asked you to answer. Only five of them. Each, so the five will be 25, and the 75 of that is making 100. Okay. At the beginning of the academic year, I mentioned that you should comment on Sakai and then you contribute to the discussion ongoing. I've gone through the comments, and I'm going to award you some marks for all those efforts that you have put in. So those of you who were not able to um, go back to your questions, I mean the medicine, and you are kind of depressed, don't be depressed. At least you have some marks from your Sakai activities and all that, and then your contribution at the, with the tutors. They are going to give me a report and I'll factor all that in. So all those things plus your mid-term is 30% and your exam will be 70%. Okay, now to the main uh, crust of why I'm here. We began the academic year looking at the general preparation and care of surgical patients, pre-operative care. We look at intraoperative care and post-operative care. Because you are nurses already, you realize that most of the things there are things that perhaps you knew already. But this does really emphasize the fact that preoperative care starts from the day surgery is decided, either at the OPD or at the emergency room, be it planned or emergency surgery. And the nurses' activity on the, in the theater varies from helping the surgeon directly uh, conduct the operation or you run around making sure that things run in the theater. Right after the life suture is uh, secured, you take care of the patients. So those of you with recovery wards, post care, start on the recovery ward, 
and then you move on to when the patient is fully recovered from the surgery. So not only on the ward, but post-discharge care. Um, remember I said the course is integumentary, gastrointestinal, and uh, endocrine. But this course has also added load, added load, added cancers, added load, pain management, etc. So we also had a long um, session on cancers. The crux of the issue is that you should know how to between benign and malignant tumor. So could the benign tumor spread or not spread? Is it curable or not curable? And all that. So you should know how to distinguish the two. And then you also, also know some of the physiological processes. If you are a graduate nurse and you cannot explain the pathophysiology of cancer, then there's something wrong. Um, remember that if the, the tumor is growing without control, then why is it spreading? Okay, so what are the characteristics of cancers that make them spread, that make them kill the patient, that make them bleed so much? These were explained in very, very plain language, and I entreat you to be able to explain cancers in your own terms to the patient, and of course, the management its side effects of chemotherapy, radiotherapy, etc. Then the gastrointestinal system. I gave you some um, reading assignments there. So the individual, shall I say, um, conditions for the DIT is so much for surgery. So I ask you to read on some of them. The objectives for this end of semester exams covers everything, both the reading assignments and the ones that you have the slides on. So again, take time off, read these things, cleft palates, all the conditions of the upper GI, and then the slides also. Remember that when somebody is going for a GI surgery, there's a huge implication for nutrition or diet. So if I am a GI patient, and so you have to talk about nutrition. Then you have to take your time and reflect carefully. Is it an upper GI, a middle GI, or a lower GI? Okay, so let's say it is a, a middle GI, a laparotomy, for instance. The patient will have to get an NG tube in there. And then after the surgery, you still keep the NG tube until such a time that the bowel sounds are returned before you start oral feeding gradually. So it is important that you take your time to know the specific activities. For example, a GI patient, um, let's say laparotomy patient again, patient is going to cough. The patient is supposed to split the abdomen before the patient coughs, if not, they only give. You have a patient with, let's say, a hemorrhoids. It's very, very painful hemorrhoidectomy. So if the first person is going to have a sick back after each bowel movement, have you explained the rationale? Okay, you want to examine the wound. Who wants to show the backside to anybody? I mean, if it is you, you also not be comfortable. So privacy is very important. Helping the person to understand why you want to do what you are doing is so important. If it's an upper GI, for instance, and I have something wrong with my, let's say my oral cavity, and you want to help me, you keep your mouth shut for two hours without saying anything. Look at the scent that comes out. Then somebody has, let's say, a cancrum oris or some ulcer, and you are taking care of the patient. You don't need to make any, I mean, any sign to show that, hey, you are smelling. A person knows, you don't need to tell the person. So you have to be very diplomatic in the care of a GI patient. It's so, so important to me that you take this thing on board as nurses as you care for your patient day in and day out. Then we also um, delve into the endocrine system where we talk about the thyroid gland, uh, goita, thyroidectomy, etc. You already have some knowledge of the thyroid issues in medicine, but this is surgery, okay. 
So if a patient's um, hormone thyroxine T3, T4 is high, you don't send that person to the theater. The BMI is high, the patient will die on the theater table. As a nurse, you should be able to explain to the patient why we need to bring the thyroxine level to normal, the interior state, before surgery is done. It's very, very important. So patient go into lab, I mean, doing laboratory investigation to confirm the thyroxine levels and all that. You know, it has some financial applications. But you see, if you're able to explain to the patient, and the patient knows that my life is at stake, so I need to do this and move on, the person will try and cooperate. So we have to learn the rationale, the essence, this degree level of surgery um, course is more of the essence, the reasons why we do things that we do. And as nurses, we are trained to bring the information down to the patient level. So then we need to be able to package the information such that the ordinary person on the streets will understand. So the patient goes to theater, surgery is performed. Traditionally, we kill animals, cutting the neck. And this goiter is a neck surgery. So, okay, if it's me, will I really, really feel comfortable somebody cutting my throat? Do you want to kill me? You know, so what are the organs here at the neck level? A good nurse, a good surgical nurse, would take her time or his time to explain the structures, the anatomical location of stuff, so that when you talk about the gland, the thyroid gland, and the surgery thereof, you have to go back and tell the person issues about the trachea, the supergos, etc., so that the person knows that this is a superficial organ. It is not behind the, the throat, I mean the throat, the one that we use to kill people. So the person will be a bit relaxed. And of course, the person will still be anxious, but you need to be able to, not convince, but explain to the person such that if you do not allow us to take parts of the gland out or all the gland, these are the repercussions. And you introduce the person to somebody who has undergone the same surgery and perhaps the person will relax. Remember that when a person regains consciousness, you are going to prop this patient up. That means that you need to stabilize the neck, okay? So you are on the watch. All of you are working, I know. I know that some of you are not working on the surgical ward. But perhaps the next change of staff, you go to the surgical ward. What will you do? So you prop this patient up, perhaps you use some sandbags to stabilize the neck. And because the person is lying with the head to tail back, sometimes when they are bleeding, the bleeding doesn't come to the surface, it rather drains back to the back of the neck. So, we are checking for your two fingers uh, around the patient's neck to see whether there's any bleeding there. You watch out for the frequent swallowing. The person swallowing so frequently, what's the person swallowing? You have not given the person anything to eat. So what's the person swallowing? Perhaps the person is having an internal bleeding. Somebody who has undergone thyroid surgery, you don't allow the person to talk and talk, you rest the voice. So these issues have been taken care of. Now I'm saying that, even though I gave you the general pre-op, intra-op and post-op, every surgical condition has a specific nursing, shall I say, focus. You want to be sure that even though the general is there, these issues are taken care of. So for the endocrine system, please identify the specific issues there and let them be at the fingertips. Then we also talk about the integumentary system where we discuss bends, inflammations, etc. Again, this area has a little overlap with um, pathology. Yes, pathology, where you discuss inflammations. Okay. For the surgical nurse, what are we concerned about? You are going to cut somebody. So the normal defense, which is the skin, is going to be tempered with. What will be your concerns? How do you prevent infection of a wound? 
such that a person can have that wound healed so that the normal protection of the body can be restored. That is why the documentary system is part of surgery. So you should be able to identify the particular nursing activities that you can do to prevent infection of wounds. And then if the person has burns, for instance, how do you care for the person, etc. And we also discuss some current trends in surgery. And you know we are all moving forward. So currently we have this endoscopic surgery is ongoing. What do you know about it? Okay, so those of you who travel to hospitals that they carry out endoscopic surgery, can't you talk to a nurse who works there or a surgeon who does these surgeries to learn the new trends? So um, principally, this is what we did this semester. And again, I said that you're going to have 75 or 30 questions and five very, very short answer questions. And so, um, Anytime you pass through a cry, pass through Legon, and you want to talk to any of us, our doors are always open. Just make sure that you are sure that we are there, and then you pass through, you can interact. Your tutors are also there to help you. Uh, if there's anything that you are having challenge with, you can just drop me an email. I'll gladly respond. So on this note, my name is Dr. Lydia Aziato, like you've seen on the um, your course already. Next semester, we we'll again meet for Nursing 333, and so um, our interaction is going to follow up from where we have left off. And on this note, I want to wish you well in your exam, and I want to congratulate you for coming this far and for taking steps to, I mean, upgrade yourself. But remember, distance education is do it yourself affair. The fact that you are far away somewhere and we are here doesn't mean that if you take the course, I mean, just anyhow. Mm. If by the close of one week of your course, remember your partner is going to have the same BSc degree are having five days a week with us, and you are there. So if by the close of one week you haven't done anything, you haven't learned anything new, then there's something wrong, please. The fact that you are far away doing this on your own doesn't mean that you take it lightly. You should be able to look for information, learn, so that at the end of the day, when you have the degree, you can deliver. When you have the degree and you go anywhere, somebody can respect that degree that you have. So I would um, end wish you well. Thank you very much.